You just finished lunch, and an hour later you're raiding the fridge, starving despite eating a thousand calories. Ever wonder why your brain seems to ignore the meal you just had? Today I'll explain the sugar insulin hunger loop like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand why cravings aren't about willpower and how to break the cycle without cutting carbs forever. Here's what's actually happening inside you. You eat sugar or simple carbs, a bagel, a soda, a bowl of cereal, whatever. Your blood sugar spikes fast, like someone just slammed the gas pedal in your bloodstream. Your body sees that spike and panics because too much sugar in your blood is dangerous. So it releases insulin, a cleanup crew that grabs all that sugar and pushes it into your cells. Problem solved, right? Not quite. Insulin is aggressive. It's like that friend who overcommits to helping you move and accidentally throws out stuff you wanted to keep. It doesn't just bring your blood sugar back to normal, it often pulls out too much, crashing your levels below where they started. Now here's where the hunger kicks in. When your blood sugar drops below baseline, your brain freaks out. It thinks you're starving, even though you ate an hour ago and consumed plenty of calories. Your brain doesn't care about the facts. It cares about survival. And low blood sugar feels like an emergency. So it sends out hunger signals to protect itself. That's the loop. Sugar spikes insulin. Insulin crashes blood sugar. Crashed blood sugar triggers hunger. You're not weak. You're not addicted. You're just caught in a mechanical process, doing exactly what it evolved to do, and accidentally making you ravenous. Think of it like this. Imagine your blood sugar is a campfire. Protein and fat are logs. They burn slow and steady for hours. Sugar is lighter fluid. It creates this huge flame that looks impressive for about 10 minutes, then dies out completely. Your body sees the flame go out and panics, thinking the fire's dead, so it screams at you to add more fuel right now. That's why you can eat a donut and feel hungrier 30 minutes later than if you'd eaten nothing at all. The crash leaves you worse off than you started, your body desperately searching for quick fuel to fix what the sugar broke. It's not in your head, it's pure chemistry. Here's where it gets wild. The timing of when you eat sugar matters almost as much as whether you eat it at all. Your insulin sensitivity changes throughout the day based on your circadian rhythm and when you last ate. Eating sugar first thing in the morning on an empty stomach is like waking up your insulin system with an air horn. Your body hasn't processed food in hours, so that spike hits extra hard, and the crash comes faster. You're basically programming yourself to be hungry all day starting from breakfast. That morning muffin isn't giving you energy. It's sabotaging your metabolism for the next 12 hours. Late night sugar does something different, but equally destructive. Your insulin sensitivity drops at night because your body's winding down for sleep, not processing glucose. So that ice cream at 11 p.m.? Your body has to release even more insulin to deal with it, which means a harder crash. And now you're trying to sleep with blood sugar on a roller coaster which is why you wake up either starving or feeling like garbage. You just spent eight hours in metabolic chaos instead of actually recovering. Your sleep quality tanks because your body's too busy managing a glucose emergency to enter deep rest. But here's what nobody tells you. The problem isn't sugar itself, it's eating sugar alone. When you eat carbs with protein or fat, everything slows down. The protein and fat act like a buffer, like adding a slow release coating to the sugar, so it trickles into your bloodstream instead of flooding it. Your insulin response stays measured. Your blood sugar stays stable. No spike means no crash, means no emergency hunger signal an hour later. It's the difference between chugging coffee on an empty stomach and having it with eggs and toast. Same caffeine, completely different experience. Same sugar amount, completely different metabolic outcome. This is why eating order matters. If you eat protein first, then fat, then carbs, you're building that buffer before the sugar even arrives. Your body handles the whole meal as one slow package, instead of a sugar emergency followed by other stuff. It's like putting on sunscreen before you go to the beach instead of after you're already burned. The damage happens fast, the protection has to come first. Even just eating a handful of nuts before your pasta changes the entire insulin response. Studies show this can reduce your blood sugar spike by up to 40% from the exact same meal. Same food, same calories, totally different hormonal response, just by changing the order. Now check this out. If you're doing intermittent fasting or OMAD, this loop becomes even more critical. You've only got one eating window, which means one chance to get it right. If you break your fast with sugar or simple carbs, 
you're spiking insulin hard after hours of fasting. You're crashing your blood sugar and spending your entire eating window fighting cravings instead of feeling satisfied. You're basically wasting your one meal on a blood sugar disaster. Start with protein and fat, then add carbs at the end if you want them. Your hunger will stay quiet and you'll actually feel full instead of hunting for snacks 20 minutes later. This single change can mean the difference between fasting feeling easy or impossible. And if you're cutting calories to lose weight, stable blood sugar is your secret weapon. Hunger is the reason most diets fail. People think they just need more discipline, but you can't willpower your way through a blood sugar crash. Your brain will win every time because it thinks you're dying. The goal isn't to eat less sugar through sheer force of will. It's to stop triggering the insulin spike that creates the hunger. Stable blood sugar means stable hunger, and stable hunger means you're finally in control instead of white knuckling it. This is why people who eat balanced meals lose weight easier than people who try to survive on rice cakes and willpower. The calorie deficit becomes sustainable when your hormones aren't screaming at you every hour. This matters to you because we've been taught that cravings mean weakness, that if you're hungry after eating, you're just not disciplined enough, but your body isn't betraying you. It's following instructions. Bad instructions, sure, but instructions based on what you fed it and when. The fix isn't restriction. It's not cutting carbs forever or going full keto or punishing yourself for wanting a cookie. The fix is understanding the mechanics so you can work with your biology instead of fighting it. You're not broken. You're just working with incomplete information. Some people hear this and think they need to avoid sugar completely, like it's poison. That's not the point. The point is strategy. You want dessert? Eat it after a meal with protein and fat, not alone on an empty stomach. You want cereal for breakfast? Add Greek yogurt and nuts so it's not just sugar in a bowl. You want a soda? Have it with lunch, not as a mid-afternoon pick-me-up when your blood sugar's already shaky. It's not about never eating sugar. It's about never eating sugar alone and setting yourself up for the crash. Small changes in timing and pairing can eliminate cravings without eliminating foods you actually enjoy. To recap, you eat sugar, insulin spikes to clear it out. Insulin overshoots and crashes your blood sugar, and your brain panics and makes you hungry. It's not addiction or lack of discipline, it's mechanical. Eating sugar first thing in the morning or late at night makes it worse because your insulin sensitivity is off. The fix is eating protein or fat first to buffer the sugar, never eating carbs alone, and timing matters more than you think. If you're doing OMAD or cutting calories, one bad spike can ruin your whole day. Stable blood sugar equals stable hunger. And stable hunger means you're not white knuckling it anymore. So here's the real question. Are you still blaming yourself for being hungry or are you ready to stop spiking your insulin and actually break the loop for good?